Okay, welcome back. We're going to finish up these problems dealing with these uh, accident probabilities here. And this is really where it starts to get interesting when you're talking about conditional probabilities and talking about statistical independence. So, number seven here, I want to know what's the probability that an accident involves an A injury given that we know it involved a pedestrian. So, we know someone was hit who was walking, a pedestrian. Now, what's the probability it's an A injury? Now, this is kind of an interesting question. Now, get your conditional probability formula out, and let's translate this. Um, in order to do a conditional probability, we need to have on the top the intersection of these two things, A injury and, let me copy that little symbol there, what's the probability there was an A injury and there was a pedestrian involved and we need to divide that by the probability of what was given that there was a pedestrian involved so let's go over to our table and find those two things a injury intersect pedestrian a injury and pedestrian so down here's pedestrian a injury and pedestrian that's this probability right here point zero 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 five to eight. And we also need the probability there was a pedestrian involved, and that is this probability over here, 0 0.0080464. So filling in those probabilities, we have A injury and pedestrian, 0 0.0050528 divided by 0 0.008464 equals Pause the video, calculate it, see what you get. So we get it that there's about a 6% chance, given we know that a car hit a person, a pedestrian, there's about a 6% chance that that person, well, or someone involved, we can think that it's probably going to be the person walking rather than the vehicle, someone in the vehicle, about a 6% chance that there's a severe disabling injury involved. That kind of makes sense. Now let's do exactly the same thing for a bicyclist, a pedal cyclist. Um, we're going to just modify this uh, formula slightly. Um, probability there's an A injury and there's a pedal cyclist. Let me put pedal there instead of pedest PED for pedestrian. Divided by the probability there was a pedal cyclist involved. Let's go back to our table of numbers and find those probabilities. The intersection, A injury and pedal cyclist, here is um, 0 0.000528. It's actually the same as that intersection was for pedestrian. Now, we need to divide that, though, by the probability that there was a pedal cyclist involved, which is 0 0.0040892. So let's set that up. It's the same probability there. On the top, but we need to divide it by a smaller number, 0 0.0040892. Okay, pause the video, calculate, see what you get. Okay, when we divide that out, we get about 0.129, or about 13% chance. So, now let's compare these last two. Given there's a pedestrian involved, there's a 6% chance of a severe disabling injury. Given there's a bicycle involved, there's a 13% chance there's a severe disabling injury. So, let me ask you the question. Which would you rather be? Would you rather be hit by a car as a pedestrian or hit by a car on a bicycle. These numbers seem to suggest that it's a little bit safer, a little bit less chance, about half the chance, of receiving a disabling severe injury if you're walking than if you're riding a bike. And on a bike maybe you don't have as much control and you're going faster when a car hits you. So that might make sense. Now let's reverse these two. Now what's the probability that given there was an A injury involved, it involves a pedal cyclist. Now how are these two different? Well, one thing is always given, 
or certain and one thing is probable and so we're, we're looking at switching those two here we have the probability of an A injury and pedal cyclist involved on the top just like we do in number eight what changes is what's given and that's the probability of what goes on the bottom A injury so A injury is what goes on the bottom now so again we have the same 0 0.000528 on the top but we're going to divide it by a different number the probability that there was an A injury and that A injury probability is down here on the bottom total of the column A injury 0 0.007255 0 0.007 255. Okay, again, pause the video and calculate this and see what you get. So I got about 7%, 0 0.07. There's about a 7% chance that given we know there's an A injury, that a bicyclist, pedal cyclist was involved. But if we know a pedal cyclist involved, there's a higher chance, 13% chance of an A injury. Now, in 10, what's the probability A injury with a C on it? Complement. That means, what's the probability that there was not an A injury involved? Using the complement rule, 1 minus the probability that an A injury was involved up here. All right. So 1 minus 0 0.007255. Pretty simple. It's going to be about 0.99. Two seven four five. Just doing that in my head there. Hopefully that's right. So this is the probability that there was not a severe disabling injury. That's the most severe injury. Now number eleven. What's the probability that there was not an A injury or there was an angle accident? Now we could use the um, addition rule here. Instead of calculating it, I'm just going to show you where this would be on the table and let you figure it out. This one's a little complicated. It's, it's the 11th one we've done. Let me show you how you could do this. A, not an A injury or an angle accident. So we want all the angle accidents here. So that's one thing we want. Let me highlight those in yellow. And we want to union that with all of the not... A injuries. Union that with the not A injuries. Well, what kinds of injuries are not A injuries? A, a, a injury, not, and angle. Well, we have all the angles there. The not A injuries are going to be the fatalities, right? And the um, B injuries, the C injuries and the property damage only. Right? That is what it means, the not A injury. So we want to union all of those yellow together. Now what do you have to keep in mind when you're doing the uh, addition rule? And you're, you're looking at unions. You want to add everything up, but you don't want to double count anything. So I want you to think about how you could add up these things and make sure that nothing is double counted. I'll leave that to you as an exercise. So let's move on to these next problems. These are the ones that are really interesting here. Um, we have to do them quickly because we're going to run out of time. So number 12, are angle and PDO statistically independent? Do the calculations, don't guess, and what does your answer mean? So let me pause the video and set this up for us. Okay, I've got it set up here. So we want to check and see if things are statistically independent. First, angle and property damage only. You have to check. You have to calculate. Don't just guess. So um, the probability that an accident is an angle accident we have up here is 0 0.3264741. And we want to see, is that equal to... The probability that an accident is an angle accident given we know that it's a property damage only accident. We have to calculate this. We don't know what this probability of an angle given it's a property damage only is. 
So we need to check, and here's the formula, conditional probability rule, to calculate that. Let's go to our table and find the two pieces, the intersection of the two and property damage only. So the intersection of angle and property damage only is right here, 0.166337, okay, equals 0.166337, and we need to divide that by the probability that an accident involves property damage only. And looking at the table, that is 0.546498. Pause the video and calculate that and see, is it the same as the probability of an angle accident? So the answer we get is 0 0.3043689. So um, is that the same as, is it equal to 0 0.3264741? Um, no, it's not the same number. Now, it's kind of close-ish, but it's uh, a couple of, you know, more than 2% different. And so, um, I would not say those two things are equal. So, I would say that because they are not equal, they have to be equal in order to be independent, um, I would say that angle and property damage only are not independent. They are dependent. Now, what does this mean? Well, suppose you are listening to um, the radio, you're a policeman, and they say, there's been an accident. And you say, wow, I, I wonder what the probability is that it was an angle accident. You look in your table, and you see that the probability it's an angle accident is uh, almost 33%. Then you hear on the radio, but it's a property damage only accident. You say, oh, now that I know that it's a property damage only accident, given that, the probability it's an angle accident just went down from almost 33% to about 30%. So the probability has decreased that it's an angle accident once you know that no one is hurt. Angle accidents are, are pretty dangerous accidents. So it, it slightly decreases the chance that it's an angle accident once you know that no one was hurt. Now, we could have checked the probability that it's a property damage only. Is that the same as property damage only given that it's an angle accident? We could have checked that. You don't have to check both of those things. As long as one is true, as long as one is equal, the other is equal. If one is not equal, the other will not be equal. Now, let's do this one down here quickly. Our rear end and turn uh, is that kind of accident independent of being a property damage only. So I've got it set up for you here. Um, we want to see is the probability of a rear end turn accident. Let's see, those are um, rear end turn. Okay, 0 0.0118718. 0 0.0118718. Is that the same? Question mark equals the proper did, pro probability of a rear end turn accident given no one was hurt. So let's look at the two pieces we're going to need in order to calculate that. Um, rear end turn and property damage only. And then on the bottom, property damage only. So rear end turn and property damage only right here. 0 0.006464. 0 0.006464. Let me make sure I'm getting the right number here. 006464. Okay. And we need to divide that by the probability that it's a property damage only accident, which we already have from the previous problem up here. So pause the video, calculate it, and see what your conclusion is. Is it the same as the probability of a rear end turn accident? Okay. And here's our answer that uh, the probability that an accident is a rear end turn is equal to 0 0.011828. Now, are those two numbers equal, 0 0.0118718? Is that the same as 0 0.011828? Well, certainly not in a technical sense, but I would say that those are close enough. This gets into the problem of how close is close. Those two are close enough. We learned that rear-end turn accidents are 1.18% of accidents. 
Once you learn that it's a property damage only, it's about the same, so they are statistically independent.